Hi again, I'm Mike from Come Through Interactive and in this episode, part three of our Shop Interface series, we're going to take a look at extending it, adding an extra window in and displaying a little bit more information about each of our items. So let's jump straight in. So what we want to be able to do, we want to be able to, whenever we click on one of our items in the shop, we want that item's information to be displayed in the window that we've had here all along. So that includes the sprite, its name, its description and its cost. So we're going to need another manager script here. We'll throw that in to our scripts folder and we'll call that item info manager. And we'll open that in Visual Studio. And same as always, get rid, get rid. And we're going to need to be using a text mesh pro namespace. Now, for a start in this, what we're going to need, we're going to need a reference to all of our UI elements here. So we're going to need a name, description, cost, and sprite. So we'll just add those in really quickly now. There we go. Uh, as you may have seen, I did need to add another namespace. I needed to add Unity Engine UI to get the image class. Now, in this, we're also going to want to keep a reference to the current item that we're looking at. So we'll just have a public item, current, oh, current item. And we're also going to want some static methods in this. So we're going to have to make this into a singleton. Now, if you don't know what a singleton is, put basically a singleton is just making sure that we only have one instance of this game object active at any given time. Uh, and in doing so, we can create the instance, which allows us to access uh, internal non-static variables from uh, static methods. Now you'll see that working in just a second. So we can create a private item info manager and we'll just call that instance. I'm sorry, that needs to be static. So a, a private static info manager instance. And then in our awake method, we can check if instance equals null. If it does equal null, then we don't al already have one. So we can set instance equal to this. Else we do already have one, so we can destroy the game object that it's attached to. What we'll also do is when we create it, we'll just initialize item name dot text to nothing item description dot text to nothing item cost dot text equal zero and what we'll do with the item sprite dot game object dot set active false so when we first load we won't have that horrible white box with no sprite in it and then finally we'll create a public static so this is the method that we're going to be <coughs> excuse me this is the method that we're going to be calling from elsewhere in our project so public static void we'll just do set ui again but this time we're going to need to pass in an item so what we'll do first things first our instance dot current item will be equal to item and then we'll also set instance dot item I cannot spell item name is equal to the item that we've just passed in's name why well, you're not working for me we need to access the text element instance dot item description is equal text is equal to item description instance dot item cost cost dot text is equal to 
item dot item cost and now because that's an integer we'll have to put that to a string and then instance dot item sprite dot sprite is equal to item dot item sprite now what we do need to do because we've set this to inactive at the top here if this is the first time in we're going to have our item sprite disabled so we can just check if our instance dot why can't i spell instance dot item sprite dot is active we'll check if it's not actually if it's not active then we'll just activate it like so and then we'll just continue on with our processing now if we just pop back over into unity we'll grab our item window and throw the info manager script on we can then drag and drop all of our elements so our sprites there uh, dis I should really start locking the, the inspector in fact I will there we go uh, our item description text goes in, our item name text goes in, our item cost text goes in, and that should be fine. So now finally, to actually implement that method, if we jump back into our item button, instead of just debugging, what we can do, we can now, because it's static, do the item info manager dot set UI and we'll pass in the item of the button that you've pressed so let's see if that's working as we expect we play the game you can click the scroll you have the scroll, the ice mage's scroll, 500 sword, wooden sword and the axe all looking really good and now just as a final little flourish what we can do we can just make sure that we can actually buy these items so as a quick test we'll create a new script we'll call it player inventory open that up now this is going to be a bit of a, uh, a slapdash approach your player script and your inventory script is going to be a lot more in depth and detailed than mine but uh, what we can do just as a quick quick test we can do a public static int gold and we'll give ourselves a thousand gold to test with and we also need a public static we need a list so we need to be using system.collections.generic we need a public static list of items and we'll just call that all items now a public static void print inventory so what this one when we call it we just want to debug.log every item that's in our inventory currently so again we'll do a for each item item in all items and then we'll just do debug.log item dot item name now after that if we just go back into our item info manager we can add another text mesh pro element for player gold we'll make sure that we set the player goal dot text equal to our player inventory dot gold at the start and we'll need to make sure we put that as a string and when we set the UI we can then but what we do need to do actually is we need a public void buy button 
and inside the buy button what we're going to need to do we're going to need to check if the current item dot item cost is greater than our player inventory dot gold then we cannot afford this item so we'll just do a debug dot log you can't afford this but if we can afford it what we want to do we then want to have player inventory dot gold minus equal to the current item dot item cost we also want to have player inventory dot all items dot add and we want to add in our current item and finally we need player gold dot text to equal player inventory dot gold that'll just refresh our UI after a purchase so let's jump in and see if that's working I don't think we need to connect anything else up here we'll open that up Oh, I tell a lie, we do need to do it. We need to connect the player's gold text element. That's what we're missing. Current gold into there, and now we can play. So, as you see, we have a thousand gold that we've given ourselves in the script. The scroll is 500. We grab that. It does absolutely nothing. Why is it not doing anything? You may ask. Don't ask me, I don't know. Da, 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 da. What did we do? I haven't hooked up the buy button. It's getting late now. I'm getting tired. Right, so if we select our buy button down here, we add the on-click event, drag in our item window, item info manager, buy button. Now if we play it, scroll, buy, absolutely not, what, why, when, why is this? Bruh. I've not created it, equals new list of type item. Third time's a charm. Come on. Fingers crossed. Scroll. Bye. Yes, it works. Thank God. <laughs> All right, there we go. And just as the final little flourish, what we're going to do, we are going to add in one extra button, which will be public void show inventory and when you press that all that's going to do is call player inventory dot print inventory and we'll remember to hook that up this time to our inf inventory button here so I'll drag that in on show inventory so now in a console window when we bought a few items we should be able to see so we'll buy a scroll two swords and three wooden swords let's check our inventory there we go one scroll two swords three wooden swords we got there in the end well, I know I say this every time, but I hope you've learned something. I hope you can find some use for this. I hope it made sense more than anything. I confused myself a couple of times there. Uh, it's been good speaking with you again. I'll see you again next time. Make sure you follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook. That's comp3.interactive on both platforms. Tune in again next week for the next video. See you again soon.